What's up guys? We are here in beautiful Pilos, Greece and we're about to go on a little adventure to Kalamata. We have one stop on the way, waterfall. We're going to check it out and then check out the market in Kalamata. Have some beautiful dinner, check out the sunset. Life is good. Let's go baby. Here we are, step number one, we are the Polimino waterfall. Beautiful, water squeezing, I'm going for a little dip, a little rehab dip, let's do it. What's up guys? I'm here with my friend Aristo in beautiful... Jora Messinias. Jora Messinias, which is located on the southwest of the mainland of Greece. And we are here in one of Aristo's many olive groves. And he's going to kind of take us through the process of how the harvest is done. And then we'll go see the press. But today, let's start with here. We're in the olive grove. So what are the first steps? Okay, for the récolte, we commence au commencement dans le mois d'octobre. Puis on finit vers la fin de décembre. Ok, perfect. And, uh, la récolte, c'est évidemment une fois par année seulement. Pas par année. Oui. And how many olives do you think, or how many like uh, pounds or kilos of olives do you harvest every year? We have uh, about 6,000 uh, trees. 6,000 trees. And we produce, uh, each tree produce every year like uh, 10 to 20 uh, kilos of oil. All right, so as you can see here, there's nets going all the way up. How does that work? The guys in the morning come here and like lay down the nets before they start doing the, the picking, right? Yeah, we do that maybe for 10, 15 trees at a time. Okay, so they, they, work, they work by sections? Yes. So I guess the goal of the nets is like making sure all the others are staying uh, trapped in these nets and then they just kind of like wrap or they just yes. hand pick it or? Yeah, and then they put in the... Yeah, you have those bags over there, the so they just there, kind yeah. of like, yeah. so they kind of like just go with their hands, picking all the olives, put it no, in the bag. No, just uh, pick it up this, like that. So now we're here in the middle of the grove, and this is the part where it's my favorite part for sure. We have these long sticks here, and it's like kind of like working as um, as propellers. And these things are just kind of like getting all the olives off of the trees without hurting the tree, without damaging the tree. So it's a very like modern way to do it because before it was done how before you used to do it like by hand, like have yeah, like yeah. So it's like a very like more efficient way to do it, and it was, there's zero damage to the tree. So basically, what you do is just turn this thing on like this. And you just whack it. Sometimes you get olives in your face, but it's part of the fun, you know what I mean? So we're all done with the harvesting part of the operation. Now we have those big bags. There are 65 kilos each of olives, which should probably give you 8 to 10 kilos of eight to olive, 12. olive oil. There eight you go. To 12. So as you can see, these guys are very strong. So yeah, get these bad boys on a tractor and we're gonna head to the press and uh, see what the next steps are. Let's go. We just set the barbecue on fire. Um, we're supposed to have a nice barbecue, but this is temporary and the paint's coming off because I fucking loaded this thing with charcoal. We're gonna go check out the operation in the olive press because we're here. After all, at the brand new Lab Excuse Press, and uh, we're about to see the whole process. Let's go. It's 
So here it is, a big, big day today. I'm exhausted. We went doing the harvest, the press. We tripped an amazing moussaka for the whole team here. And it was just a very fun experience to like see the whole process and to be able to show you from A to Z how much work and how much love is behind every single drop of olive oil. And uh, very excited for tomorrow. We have a big week here and um, we'll see you tomorrow. Woo! Okay guys, here it is, our last day in Greece. We decided to rent the boat, check out the scenery, go check out some secret beaches, do a little fishing, and hopefully catch something to make a little crudo on the beach. So stay tuned and hopefully catch something. Let's go. Here we go guys, first fish of the day. Today we fucking eat, baby, let's go. Doesn't look very big, but you know what? What's the expression we say? Beggars can be choosers, guys, you know? We're here. Might be a jellyfish, I don't know. Doesn't feel very big. It's still there. So uh, this might be a little too small for uh, what we're looking for. Maybe a very uh, small crudo, so put this guy back to the water and uh, he's gonna move by. This one might be bigger, guys, I don't know. A bit of a bigger battle for sure. There's tension, it's still there. Fucking rip my finger. I think it's pretty close. What are you guys thinking? A mackerel? A bonito? Lose it low. Oh, baby! <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. It's a fucking nice fish, guys. Here you go, baby. I believe this is like a. Uh, uh, a sea bream, or maybe a sea bass, perhaps. Or probably a sea bream. Look at this color. Fuck yeah. All right, well, I guess we have dinner now, baby. Let's go. Well, guys, good news. We got two fish. Not one, but two. And now we're heading to our secret little beach. We'll make a nice little crudo. We have some beautiful grapefruit, some prunes, some cucumber, good olive oil. Everything we need. Let's go. We've taken a wild ride through the heart of Messenia, and let me tell you, it's been a flavor-packed journey from start to finish. From the rugged mountains to the golden beaches, this place is a feast for the eyes. But you know what, for me, it's the people who stole the show, with their warmth, their laughter, and of course, the incredible hospitality. Thanks for tagging along on this epic adventure. If you want to experience more amazing travel and culinary content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Let me know in the comments which destination you would like to see me visit next. Until next time, opa!